So now, just begin with a little story this, this morning. Uh, it was a little um, Peanuts cartoon. And in, in the um, cartoon, um, Lucy said to Charlie Brown, why did God put us here on this earth? And Charlie Br Brown replied, well, God put us here in this world to, to make other people happy. And Lucy wasn't very happy with this answer. And she said, well, I don't think I make anybody happy. And nobody, and nobody helps me to be happy. And then she shouted out, somebody is not doing their job. Who was a somebody? And who was a somebody? It was Lucy. So welcome to the banquet of life. So the question for us this morning, are you enjoying life? You might say to me, have you got any, any more stupid questions to ask? Are you enjoying life? I mean, how can we enjoy life in the middle of a pandemic? Well, do you listen to the readings this, this morning? Um, listen, listen again, because sometimes we don't listen. We hear, but we don't listen. Just, just go, go back to St. Paul for a moment. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know how to live in abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I've learned the secret, the secret, the secret of life, of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and living in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. So, another question, because I like, I like answering, I like asking questions when I think I know the answer, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't profess to know everything, but I try to answer some questions, and if I don't know, I just say, I don't know. So, the answer is, um, to forget now I went off on a tangent. But any, anyhow, are you enjoying life at, at, at the moment? How do you approach life? And did you notice uh, in the Bible, in the scriptures, in the New Testament, Jesus speaks about life 15 times, about eternal life. Eternal life is here and now and here, hereafter doesn't just begin hereafter. He speaks about life as a banquet, as a wedding feast, as a party, something to be enjoyed. And all we concentrate on is Matthew 25, uh, where's a little a thing about the last judgment. And we get all walked up about that, and we forget about the banquet of life. And God, it is a banquet. Life is a banquet. So let's go back again to the first reading, which fits in very nice with the gospel this morning. What does the first reading say? Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people a feast of rich food and choice wines, Juicy, rich food, and pure, choice wines for all peoples. On this mountain he will destroy the veil, the, ve the veils of who? All peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, not just a few, but all. And Jesus came, and everything he said was totally inclusive. And so, 
who ends up at the feast this morning, good and bad alike, all good and bad alike. And I think, and I have done it too, I think we very much forget that. Now, this gospel this morning, and the first reading, and the readings uh, you've been listening to, ho hopefully listen, fits in beautifully with this month. Because this month, the month of October, is Respect for Life Month. Now, you've got to think of, about that. And I've got to ask myself, do I have a true respect for life? We are very often in our prayers of in intercession, we pray, we, we pray um, for our life from the moment of conception, the moment of conception, conception to the very end of life. So there's no part of life we don't care for from the moment of conception. That's very important. That means we don't agree with abortion. The moment, from the moment of conception to the end of life. That's the gospel. But do you believe in that? Ask yourself, is that my attitude to life? Okay, you might say, well, yes, I, I do, because I'm totally against abortion. Well, that's very good, and rightly so. But what about the death penalty? What about, do you care for people at the borders? Do you care for refugees? Do you care for people f free, fleeing from f violence and terror and war? What is your attitude towards those? Or do you think we should be building walls and keeping these pe people away? Do you agree with health provision for all people, not just some, not just for some who can afford it, but for all people? Or do you support people who are willing to take away that, take away whatever insurance they have at the moment? Why should I be entitled to care and attention if I'm ill or sick and somebody out there is not provided for. Do you go along with that? Yes or no? There's no in between. Well, maybe. No, 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 no. There is no may, maybe. You either do or you don't. And when it comes to ch church, look at us as a church. Look at, go back a bit. There are many parishes too today where many people feel not welcome. Not welcome because they're in a second marriage or in, their, in a second or third relationship, because they're gay or lesbian, or because they, they're something else, and they just they don't feel welcome. I hope that never happens here. I hope that never happens here. And it's not, it's not unusual to find churches and parishes where certain people are refused the sacraments. Can you imagine that? Refused Holy Communion. What right have I to judge anyone? Who am I to judge, as Pope Francis says? Thank God, in my 56 going on 57 years as a priest, I've never once refused anybody the sacraments. And I hope I never will. 
I never will. There are people, many, many, and maybe you're one of them, that you had a child out of wedlock, and you went along to a church or a parish to have your little baby, your little child baptized, and instead of saying, yes, I'd be happy to do so, the first question the priest asks you, are you married? And you say no. And the priest says, I can't baptize your child. Where is the respect for life? Where? So, you know, we've got, some, we got to seriously look at ourselves and look into our hearts. And now more than ever at this time in this country, these are the things that matter. These are the things that really matter when we go to the polling booth. These are the things that matter whether we go there or don't or at all times, not just now, but at all times. And so maybe for many of us, that means a major, major change in our attitude, a major change. Or we'll, we'll end up like the guest who came to the wedding feast and had no wedding garment. That is, they are the people who pay lip service, just lip service, but then hear and don't hear. Just pay lip service. Or maybe it's time that we stopped paying lip service and really, really look into our hearts and souls. But that's what going, when we meet God, that's not what, that's what we're going to be asked. Did you care for one another? You're not going to be asked, do you ever tell a lie or do you ever have, get angry? No. Did you care for one another? Did you care for all people at all times, no matter where they came from or who they are? Were you in your life totally inclusive. And I don't think, and I refer to myself too, that very often we don't do that. And, we, and more certainly, we haven't done it in the past in our churches. I hope we'll change in the future.